Welcome to Let's Talk About Health, an informational podcast that gives you insights on health and fitness from experts themselves that you can apply directly to your own personal health and fitness stories. Come join me today to hear all about what they have to say on health and fitness. So let me start first of all by introducing you. Uh, so today we have Dr. Hanisha Patel. Thank you so much for joining the live with me. I love that you're a naturopathic doctor coming, our roots, you know, coming from India, we believe so much in Ayurveda and natural remedies. Dadi ki rasoi, nadika, niska, all of that. Yeah. So I yes. love that uh, we, you share that passion and you are so excited to uh, share that with everyone. So Absolutely. I am, I'm truly just so passionate about it. I think um, our ancestors really knew what they were doing. Our medicines are so powerful and it's so exciting to see the world shifting towards that. Um, and I'm really trying to like remind people where, where it came from too. Like this is our medicine. <laughs> Correct. Can you tell, let's start by uh, me asking you my favorite question. What is health and fitness? Yeah, great question. Um, health and I, I mean, I think fitness goes into health for sure. Mm -hmm. um, to me, health is a full embodiment of understanding what is actually nurturing your body. And so like having that mindfulness around that, what is, what are th the things the people, whatever it is that are truly nurturing your body. And I think that's what it honestly, like just simplifying, that's what it comes down to. Well, how did you get into naturopathy? Yeah, great question. So um, my story is kind of twofold. So <laughs> I'll try to keep it short because it's a little bit of a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, in undergrad, I went uh, to Ohio State University, got my undergrad degree in pharmaceutical sciences, actually. And as I was studying those medications, right. excuse me, I learned the side effects of those medications and then medications needed for those side effects and then medications needed for those side effects. And it was just like this vicious cycle. And I was like, there's gotta be a better way, right? Like this can't be the only way to practice medicine. Right. And I had the opportunity to then travel to Guatemala through a global health group. Hello everyone. <laughs> I love how all the people joining. Um, but I had the opportunity to, you know, uh, go to Guatemala and learn about their traditional medicine, learn about their organic, like organic farming practices, all of that stuff, Mayan healing practices, all of that. And then I was like, oh, like, I want to learn so much more of this. And so then I decided to go back to India and learn about Ayurveda there. And I, I, because I knew about Ayurveda growing up as an Indian American woman, um, and we grew up with it, right? And so I was like, I want to learn more about this. And so I, when I went to India, I learned more. And then I came back to the States and I was like, I don't think conventional medical school is the route for me. Like, I don't think it doesn't feel right anymore. Like I want to do something with this where I'm using nutrition and movement and lifestyle and herbal medicine and whatever other healing practices that I don't even know about. Right. Like I was like so excited about it. And then I spoke to someone who was like, I was telling them what I was passionate about. And they were like, have you heard of naturopathic medicine? And I was like, no, I have not. I looked into it and I saw the principles. I was like, yes, that is it. I, I'm, I'm sold. And then the other part of my story is I actually didn't start working with a naturopathic doctor until I went to med school. Uh, and I was thinking I was joining to help other people heal. I thought the symptoms that I dealt with were just a normal part of life. So I had just learned to deal with them. So I had constipation where I was having a bowel movement like once a week. I had irregular periods, um, maybe having a period once uh, every two or three months. Right. I had joint pain in my wrist that honestly I didn't even know was there till it went away. And I was like, oh, people don't just like have pain there all the time. I thought that was normal. <laughs> I had low back pain, um, a lot like asthma, allergies. I had all of, all of these symptoms. And it wasn't until I started working with a naturopathic doctor that I realized that that wasn't normal. And then they found that I had a Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. They found mm -hmm. I had PCOS. And then I was able to really, because I knew what 
what it was, now I was able to heal myself and then experience Mahan health, which is um, Mahan in Sanskrit translates to the best, the absolute best or great. And that's why I started my practice called Mahan health, because now I'm like, everyone should be able to experience this. I love how you just normalize pain for yourself. Right? And I think so, so many people do that. I have so many people who come to me and they're like, oh yeah, like, I, I mean, I feel fine other than like, you know, it's just like this little pain here or like I have, you know, I, I deal with all of these and then they'll like list a, like a number of symptoms. I was like, so you're not fine. <laughs> and I feel like that's very Indian. Yes. Also. <laughs> yes my parents do that <laughs> so much. Like my parents are like, oh, I'm, I feel fine. I have no symptoms. Like, you know, and I don't need any medications. And then or even supplements or anything. And I'm like, uh, and then they'll like tell me all of their symptoms that they're struggling with. I'm like, so you're not fine. And it's okay to not be fine. Like, let's just address it, you know? Yeah, yeah we get that from the Brown family stubbornness that we'll not go see the doctor until unless we're dying. Yeah. And yeah, those typical, if, if I'm going to the uh, psychiatrist, that means I'm crazy, what? I'm cuckoo. So right. we're, we're, I'm, I'm liking that we're bringing about a change. There is yes. an awareness out there that we're openly talking about. And now it's normalizing yes. to be, to be okay to talk about mental fitness, mental health. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go see the doctor for regular checkups rather than just to wait until you're having a heart attack. So right. Uh, right. we're normalizing a lot of things. And thank you to you, you know, you saw that, okay, I, I see side effects so much. I have such young patients being in physical therapy that were hooked up to opioids because the, it was prescribed by the doctor and now they cannot yeah get off uh, of it awful yeah yeah that's so terrible and that's and that's a part of the problem right we're not addressing the root of the issue Correct. we're not addressing uh, and we're not approaching it from like a therapeutic order and so that's what in naturopathic medicine ayurvedic medicine we have a therapeutic order you start with the least invasive things first right. and then as needed go up to the more invasive things and like opioids are very invasive and um really should be a last line you know a last resort kind of thing and for acute pain not chronic because if it's chronic then right. it's still not going to help long long term right they there's a prescribing the opioids, the medical marijuana to almost every surgery. And yeah. I don't think surgeries, post surgeries, you need so much. Yeah. A lot of, and people don't even know other options, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, I mean, I went through labor, which is not surgery, but it's a pretty, pretty big event that changes your body and affects your body. Right. Um, and normally they recommend, uh, ibuprofen, postpartum mm -hmm. because of the pain and i never took ibuprofen i only took arnica and um and that was it and within two days i had no pain i also did physical therapy pelvic floor physical therapy throughout mm -hmm. my pregnancy and during and, and not during and then um postpartum as well and so that helped prevent a lot of symptoms but most people aren't even aware that they could do right. these sorts of things right like i literally just injured my back um in my workout last week mm -hmm. um I guess almost, I'm almost two weeks ago now, but um, I had worked with physical therapists in the past and I have figured out like certain exercises and things that do help me. And the reason why that back, like it's always my low back, it's because of whatever I'm like, you know, my daily routine, like whatever I'm normally doing, it Im impacts my back most. And so now I know the exercises that I can do. And within a week I was fine again, but it was like a pinched nerve, like it really hurt. <laughs> so, but I, but you know, having that feeling that empowerment around your health is so much more powerful. Like I, I was ready to go, go back to see my PT, but I was like, oh wow, actually I'm feeling better just by doing the exercises that I've already done learn from them before you know yeah and knowing the natural path like exercise it's there are no side effects to exercise you know so i i love it it's so beautiful you definitely have to be cautious but exercising has Safe. shown yeah, yeah. right Safe. make sure you have proper technique and that that's how i got injured was like i actually i i assumed the kettlebell was much lighter than it was and so i was just about to like swing it real quick and it was significantly heavier and so i like 
what I should have done is double checked the weight, but it was at another gym and it was the same color yellow that I use all the time. And I was like, oh yeah, it's probably the same. And it wasn't, it was not. And so I wasn't ready for that. And I probably didn't have proper form to be able to like properly carry it in the first place. And so, so yeah, all of those things really, you know, make a difference. Right. So, um, but at the end of the day, exercise movement of some sort, walking, all of that stuff, so powerful. How much research is there now on how it sports mental health? It actually literally kills tumor cells. Like it it activates your immune function. Like it's so powerful, um, that I don't know, like, I don't know how much more research we even need. Like, I don't think we ever needed research, honestly, in the first place. Like, yes, just move your body. <laughs> Correct. You know, I was speaking with a, a, a oncology nurse a few, just last week I spoke with her on Instagram and she told me how exercising actually helps with so much of pain relief, even for oncology, yeah. like for cancer patients. and. Even we growing up, like studying, being in med school, we had the perception, oh, it's cancer. So you don't do too much. You don't, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, do exercise Mm -hmm. or you just let them rest, let them be. But now knowing about knowing so much about movement therapy, I'm like, no, I'm going to make them exercise. And that movement is going to release hormones and oxytocin. That's going to just keep them active. That's going to keep them, you know, a little they they, it'll take their pain a little away yes for sure and of course it depends right like maybe maybe we don't want to be doing like power lifting over here and that's okay (laughs) you know but like some movement can be so powerful and like it really depends on where right like i work with a lot of women um through their fertility journey pregnancy and postpartum and i'm like postpartum it's like yeah, we slowly move up. Like you don't just go straight into the intense exercise you were doing pre-pregnancy. Like you, you like it's still a slow build up, right? It took me probably about 18 months to really get back and then even and then even stronger. Um, but it's like that's normal. It's okay. Like your body like needs that support and and it's okay to slow down a little bit, but but continue to move. All right. Continue to move for sure. There a lot of misconceptions especially i've heard in india when my cousins were pregnant they said you know don't move don't take this oh oh yeah that is oh my gosh that drives me so crazy because exercise can actually be so helpful throughout pregnancy so even if you never exercised before pregnancy starting to exercise during pregnancy and it doesn't have to again doesn't have to be intense it doesn't have to be crazy just walking doing some squats like getting some movement in sitting on a yoga ball and like just activating your core a little bit like all of that can be so supportive i know during my pregnancy i had again my back is always like the one that gets a little triggered but back pain is really common during pregnancy because you have like so much weight it puts more pressure on your spine makes sense that you're more likely to have back pain but what would really help me was when i would just go into a plank i would hold a plank for 30 seconds and my back pain would go away right the more i sat on the couch the more back pain i had (laughs) and the more i was active and walking and moving and squatting and planking and doing all those things the less back pain i had you know and so and the reason for that is the plank really and this is something i recommend to a lot of my patients is because the plank what that does is it helps activate your deep core and then it can like whatever weight you're carrying you can kind of bring it up like that so it's not as much weight on your spine right and even in pt i've noticed like with back pain and uh, gluteal weakness the main muscle that none of us focus is the core mm-hmm. we do not age or you know uh, we do not deal with the core we do not take it so seriously mm-hmm. that we should and you doing a plank proves it yeah. that you know back pain is going away because you're engaging your core to such an extensive level. Mm -hmm. What are other misconceptions that you come across? In terms of exercise or pregnancy? In terms of uh, pregnancy. I hear the baby. Yes, sorry. No, it's okay. I I think he stopped playing his song and so now he's upset. (laughs) You can take, you can go attend to him if you want. No, that's okay. Yeah. No, my my um, partner is here, so he's fine. Oh, but yeah, good. he's a Bollywood baby, and he probably turned off his Bollywood song. Oh no! Oh, you need to put some good Bollywood music. <laughs> yeah. I saw your picture. Yeah. 
pictures that were you number one you do not look like a mom the way you maintain yourself girl let me tell you that's not how a mom looks but, like but it does so i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> correct you there so so moms can look like anything right like i oh. think i think again that's a big like misconception there so i will i will correct you on that like uh, because moms can be beautiful moms can be like we're all different we're all different in terms of like shapes and sizes and things like that and so um so yeah i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna correct you there <sighs> tell me more about what misconceptions you come uh, across in terms of pregnancy because you are the pregnancy guru here so <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks yeah so i actually um this is something I'm actually really passionate about, and um, this is why I created my course. It's a holistic pregnancy course to help people uh, feel more, help women feel more empowered in their bodies through that journey. And one of the biggest misconceptions during pregnancy is all the medical procedures that are uh, recommended they're actually not required. Not, not all of them are required. And so there are things like, first of all, the glucose tolerance test, like for testing for gestational diabetes, that isn't required. You can do another type of test. And so understanding that because the glucola drink that they often recommend is so high in sugar and also so it has a number of different toxins in it. And so that affects you and your baby because all the toxins go directly to your placenta and to your baby okay so that's something we definitely don't want um and so that's one thing just one of the misconceptions i see in the medical procedures that we don't need to do i usually recommend another um glucose drink uh because also what that does is uh often what i'll see is people will only take the hour one hour reading and then get misdiagnosed with gestational diabetes and the reality is if they haven't had any food and they have a drink that has like um, like a significant amount of sugar like that, their blood sugar is going to stay high for a little while, right? That's just normal. They need to at least check four hours later. And in that case, that might be something. But that's the other thing is like, so there are a lot of things that can help prevent gestational diabetes during um, pregnancy. So if you're taking fish oil during pregnancy, if you're taking vitamin D, if you're taking choline, all three of these things are something that I recommend on top of a prenatal all throughout your pregnancy because they can prevent gestational diabetes and preeclampsia. Right. And so um, and one thing that I think is important to recognize or remember that I feel like unfortunately our culture doesn't really support is that once the mother is healthy, if she feels good and she's healthy, the baby will naturally be healthy, right? right. So if she has gestational diabetes, that's negatively impacting the baby. Yeah. And the baby's health. If she has preeclampsia, that's negatively impacting the baby and the baby's health, right? So her health is directly correlated to the baby's health. She's literally housing the baby, so makes sense, right? Yeah. It's so simple, but unfortunately our world doesn't get that, right? <laughs> we we don't understand that. We're like, oh, okay, you have gestational diabetes, here's the medication, here's this, whatever. Um, but like that's impacting the baby. Like those medications are impacting the baby. All of those things are impacting the baby as well. And so those are things that we we need to become more aware of. And I think those are really big misconceptions in terms of pregnancy. And so that's something I'm really passionate about. And that's honestly a big part of why I created my holistic pregnancy course to help women uh, feel more empowered in, in this journey and just be more educated, make more informed decisions. Can you talk? Tell me more about the holistic program that you have for the pregnant ladies. Yes, of course. So I am actually doing it live right now. So if you'd like to join live, you can um, do that. It's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern and Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. We have the VIP guest. And so uh, we are and you, you'll you get access to the recordings and everything. Um, so we already had the first two weeks. The first week of module one was all about embracing the journey, um, easing some anxieties that you might have, which we all have when we find out we're pregnant. Um, and then um, and then our guest on that day, she helped us like with some tapping exercises. Uh, we did some meditation, some grounding practices, all of that to kind of just support that um, embracing of that journey. Uh, and then module two was all about nurturing the body. That's where I talked about a lot of what I just talked about um, in terms of medical procedures, lab tests to have done, supplements you need to be taking. Um, we talked about nutrients and exercise, 
all of that nutrition, exercise, all of that in that um, last module. And our, our guest was uh, a pelvic floor PT uh, who did a, a workout for us. Like, so it was really fun. And then this week is module three. It's cultivating the mind. So we're going to talk about mindfulness practices. Uh, we have a prenatal yoga instructor. We're going to talk about journaling and like meditation, which types of meditations and breath work can be really supportive. And then next week is uh, module four. It's caring for the spirit. And that's where we dive deeper into connecting with your baby, yourself, and the higher power on like a whole nother level. Um, and our guest speaker is uh, our guest uh, is teaching us uh, how to connect with our baby through dance, which is so fun. <laughs> um, and you can tell which one I'm most excited about. And this is why my son is like such a Bollywood dance baby. Uh, <laughs> but um, the last one, actually, I'm really, I'm really excited about this too. The last one um, is all about in, enjoying motherhood. And it's, it's all about postpartum health and support and how you can nourish yourself postpartum, how you can gain that support that you need. And then um, we have two doulas coming in and they're going to be talking all about how to support yourself in a, in a, a big way postpartum. So yeah, that's the whole course. It, it's so, so lovely. Is it all online? Yeah. It's all online. It's all virtual. And um Oh, on top of that, one of, actually, this is my other favorite part of this. I clearly am like really excited about this in general, but my other favorite part is there's a community forum too. So, so that we can continue to communicate, right? Like it's, this is only a five yeah. week thing, um, but we can continue to communicate afterwards. And then even if other people join later, then, then they can still ask questions. And then it's like, the way I'm seeing it is like, it's like, having the ultimate mom group you know and um and then having all of your holistic mom friends and then even a holistic doctor who's there to support you and like answer some of your questions like right literally it's an app so literally at your fingertips so um so yeah that's really exciting it sounds so much fun i'm so excited for you, you. i'm excited too i i can see <laughs> yeah when do the pregnant mamas join in like which trimester do you recommend Honestly, um, as soon as you can, uh, just because like, like I said, the first module starts with embracing the journey um, and then just understanding what the next points would be too. Cause it's, it's not like a, I don't separate it based on trimester. It's like throughout your pregnancy, all of this stuff is going to be supportive. So as early as you can, and you start incorporating these things, you have a community of moms or uh, mamas to be who are there to support you, all of that, the sooner you have that, the better. But of course, like, even if you join later on, understanding that postpartum support and all the other things is going to be really essential. Right. Uh, I've heard that the postpartum depression is a big thing in uh, uh, after pregnancy and not a lot of people take that seriously. Do you help with that as well? Yes, 100%. And so we, we discussed that as well. And so some of those supplements that I mentioned, those themselves can help prevent that. Um, and so, and then, but then we go into like, okay, if you're still feeling where, how to get support, what to do, all of those things, because a lot of the issues around postpartum is that we just don't have enough support, right? right. Women are not supported. Like, it's like when you're pregnant, everyone's like holding the door up and doing everything for you. But then as soon as you're, you give birth, it's like, you don't matter anymore. And it's all about the baby. Right. And again, even outside of the womb, when mama is healthy and taken care of, she takes care of herself. Other people are supporting her. Baby is naturally going to be healthy. They feed off of our energy. Anytime I'm feeling off, it's like my son all of a sudden is throwing more tantrums. You know, it's just like, <laughs> just he feels, he feeds off of me, right? And so it's like, I need to take care of myself. I need to feel like my best self so that he can be his best self, right? right. And so I, I think that's, that's really important. Do, it's like, the community you mentioned do like women communicate with each other do they yes. help each other yes How for sure yeah so it's like anyone can ask a question anyone can answer like it's it really is a community so like if someone's like hey i'm looking for a stroller i don't know which one mm -hmm. to get like be like hey this is the one that i got and i really like it because whatever you know and so it's just like makes the process a lot easier and so it's like Yes, it's and like the stroller question is, I feel like I'm like, yes, that's the one I always think of in terms of like random baby things you need. But, um, but also it's like asking like, hey, 
I saw this thing that I need. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, there was like this best breastfeeding thing that I got like, oh, I saw this online. Do I actually need it? And I'm like, no, you don't because it doesn't work well, you know? And so like having that like support be like, okay, I don't need to spend money on everything. Right. Cause especially first time moms, I've been there. Like, I feel like I need to get everything and all the things, but we really don't. And, and the internet makes you feel like that because the, the, you know, the ads, the target market is really good. <laughs> the marketing is so good. And then they've, feel like you make it makes you feel like you need all the things and so like asking in the group like hey is this something that's actually helpful or do i actually need it or is it okay if i like skipped on this like you know what i mean just having that additional support and then being like hey like um i had a little bit of this pain um in this area and then be like maybe that was round ligament pain maybe you could go see your pelvic floor pt now right like on top of the material things like you're getting that additional support as well do you encourage yoga along with oh, yeah yeah yes yoga is an amazing practice um and i actually just recently posted like so if anyone's interested um you could look at like the all the prenatal yoga poses that every pregnant woman should be doing um and because it can really help support and get your body ready for labor and postpartum um yoga and pelvic floor pt i think those are the main reason why i didn't have any tearing um, during labor. And I think that is something that is extremely common, mm -hmm. but it can be prevented, which is really cool. So, and then even like easing the pains, like doing these hypnobirthing meditations and things like that, um, that I talk about in my course, all of that can be really helpful in reducing the pain, um, during labor as well. So, so yeah, there's so much we could do. I know I, this is so mind blowing. Like there are so many things that you don't know about and everyone feels the same, but I think everyone is a little scared to uh, reach out or they don't have all the information or all the guidance, but this is so cool that they have a community. They can talk to one another, they're walk through the whole process. And I also know that there are a lot of single moms out there who are trying their best to deal with everything. So, it, it's a huge thing yeah yeah having that support is so essential and so wherever you can find it you know I, I think having like tangible support around you is definitely really important um but also having that emotional mental support in general um because i i feel like sometimes for me i i do have family around me but we don't always align in our thinking right and like you know i don't want my son to have sugar things like that like we don't always align in that. And so I don't have necessarily always have that support and like community in that way mm -hmm. locally, but having this even virtually online can be really helpful. Be like, okay, you're, you're not crazy. Yeah. Like there's actually a reason for this. And, and if you want to do this and you can set your boundaries, all that stuff and like supporting you through that. Does your baby help you with yoga? Oh yeah. <laughs> he loves it's It's so cute because he will, uh, he'll just randomly come up to me and be like be like down dog <laughs> like, okay <laughs> and he also does om all the time like it's just like his like it's so cute like he just randomly will tell me be like mama om and i'm like yeah let's do om <laughs> yeah. so cute yeah i saw his videos and i was like he's so adorable he, he's very cute yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the best thanks <laughs> for how Mahan Health is just about pregnancy or do you have other uh, people, other communities, yeah. other things under Mahan Health? Yes, de definitely. So um, Mahan Health, our practice, we have another doctor in our practice. Her, doc her name is Dr. Mi Tang. And she like, so I focus more on fertility, pregnancy, postpartum. Right. She does pretty much everything else. A lot of gut health, autoimmune right. health. Um, and mental health. Uh, those are really big things that she supports people with. And so she, and she's amazing. I mean, I wouldn't have her on board if she wasn't. So, um, so she's also a great person. So if, if you are looking for additional support in those areas, she's a great person to reach out to. That's awesome. Well, well, if you, if you'd be happy to share the information, I'll we'll leave all the information for her as well yeah. in our description. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you her um, Instagram handle. And um, I think you have our website as well. I do. So. I will. Okay, great. Tell me how did you
did you start like i know how you started but was there any role model that helped you through the process yeah um i i feel like i have had a lot of mentors like i i don't think i could say just one uh, i've i've definitely had a lot of mentors and a lot of them throughout medical school and i i'm i'm just very grateful for each and every one of them i i i've had you know from the clinical experience uh, the mentors that helped me there but then the mentors that both helped me in the clinical world in terms of knowing what to do uh, for patients but also like in the the empathetic compassionate world and i think that is unfortunately um not seen as often in physicians uh, right. these days because they're just so burnt out and that's a part of it. And so that's why to me, self-care, it comes to like is number one. Like I take care of myself first because otherwise then I can't be as present for my patients, my son, my partner. I'm, I'm not my best self, right? And if I'm not my best self, then what's the point? <laughs> that's literally how I feel. I'm like, if I am showing up and don't want to see my patients, then it feels terrible. Like I don't, I, I don't, I'm not helping anyone, right? I'm actually really not. And so me taking care of myself helps me then be my best self for my patients so that I, like every day that I see patients, I'm like excited to see my patients. You know, I'm excited to be there to support them through wherever they are in their journey. And, um, and that's, that's hard for that to happen if I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to. Yeah, for sure. But for sure. Everyone knows your body as well as you do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, I mean, that's something I tell my patients too. Like, at the end of the day, like, I can go based off your research, I can go based off your mm -hmm. symptoms and clinical picture. But at the end of the day, it's your body, your body, you know what to do for your body best. And a lot of times, even things that I suggest, you might have already known that but you've been afraid to make that shift, right? And now you have someone to like really kind of um, reiterate it for you, you know, remind you like, okay, yeah, this is what I need to do. Right. Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you would, what one piece of advice that you would give to 18 year old Hanisha? It's okay to let go. Okay. It's okay to let go of control because you have the power. I think that's what I would say. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I'm gonna, gonna use it. Yeah. That's an affirmation that I've been really using a lot lately because recognizing that I have power, but I don't need to have control over everything to have power. That's nice. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for taking me out. And I know you have another session again. So I know how much efforts you took to just be here so thank you it means a lot to me thank you thank, so much. You. Um, no, thank you so much for having me i'm so grateful to be here yeah i'm really looking forward to all those classes i know i'm going to stop you you know that well <laughs> i'm going to here for it <laughs> so thank you so much you. and I'll have a lovely session <laughs> thank you all right have a good one take care bye bye take care Thank you for listening to our talk about health. You can follow me on Instagram at bhavna.devnani, on Facebook at bhavna.devnani, and we'll leave all the information in the description below. Thank you.